Hi, in this video I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide as to how I pay for my Tesla. Um, I bought it about a year ago, I put down a £6,000 deposit, but I haven't made any of the lease payments since. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I did, I created an asset that creates cash, which pays for the payments. Stay with me. It also runs on electricity, it's an electric car. 95% uh, of the charging is done at home. Uh, don't pay for that either. I haven't got solar or anything like that, so I'll talk about that as well. Uh, a little side note, I've not paid to go to the cinema for the last 10 years. I'll talk about that. Well, since 2007, I'll talk about that as well. And um, I've also recently just stopped paying for my gym kit. So all my t-shirts and shorts, etc., uh, just come for free. It's amazing. I'm really impressed. So it all sounds a bit kind of fanciful and out there. Um, but I'll show you how I did it and what I do. I'm not into clickbait, I'm not into sales funnels, there's nothing at the end of this, there's not a course, there's, I'm not going to ask you to send me any money, uh, this is just how I do it. There's, I'm going to link to some books, so uh, there are some books that I found useful, uh, really useful, but I'm not even going to uh, put links in the description, I'll just show you a picture of the book and you can get it from Audible or uh, Amazon. So I don't, I'm not looking for anything to come to me from this video. I'm looking to give you information. What I'll also do is I'll, there's several parts of this and it might get long. So I'll timestamp each part. So at the, part, the start of each section, I'll give you a timestamp for the next section. So I think that's enough for an introduction. Let's get cracking. Okay, so this is part one, and it's kind of a little bit about my background. Now, if you've got no interest in me, and if you're watching this, we're probably strangers, then just go to this time index here, uh, and that's the next section. If you're still here, wonderful. So I was born uh, in London. Uh, I lived in a, a tower block as a, as a child. Uh, it was called um, Jerome Tower. It's a bit like a slightly older, smaller version of, of Grenfell Tower, which you've probably heard of. So I'm from a, a working class background. Uh, we moved to Peterborough when I was about seven off the back of some Roy Kinnear adverts, believe it or not. So <laughs> I was in quite poor health with asthma. Um, and it was thought that if we moved to the countryside, I'd be away from the pollution. However, it transpired many years later that I've got allergic asthma. So uh, I'm not allergic to pollution, I am allergic to the countryside. And uh, my mum, bless her, and I love her, and I always will love her, she also bought me a dog and a cat. So it was a very wheezy childhood, I can tell you. So fast forward to me being 30, <laughs> I had a very normal childhood, a great childhood, but the asthma thing is relevant, because when I hit 30, I wasn't really looking after myself. So I was broke, I'd been kind of broke all my life really. Even as an adult, um, I couldn't really make things work financially. Um, and my health was in decline. I had six asthma attacks in the course of eight weeks. Uh, and they were severe asthma attacks. Each one was a trip to the hospital, uh, and including a two week stay in the hospital. So it was a kind of a life changing experience. So thinking that you, well, I thought I was gonna die on each asthma attack. So. Thinking you're gonna die six times in eight weeks it is fairly tiring, I, I can tell you that. Um, but what it meant was um, I couldn't really be on there, hold down a proper job because there was, a, there was a, a recovery time physically and mentally. So although I had a job at a bank, uh, I was a manager. Now, don't be confused by the term manager in a bank. Unless you were a cleaner or a cashier, you're a manager. Everyone was a manager. I was netting 800 pounds a month on a full-time salary, and I was a manager. So yeah, don't let the, the term manager put you off the scent with this. So that's where um, I reached a crossroads, really. I either had to decide to jack work in and kind of go on the toll and benefits because I w really wasn't well enough, um, or um, I needed to stay at the bank and stay fairly low paid. My kind of, my, I was off quite a lot. Um, or um, kind of make a go of it myself. So that kind of leads us into part two, where I knew I had to make this change, uh, and these are the steps I took. 
uh, and this, this is what led me to being able to, to pay for my Tesla or to have other people pay for my Tesla. So part two is about what I needed to learn so I could make this transition. If you've got no interest in this, and I think you should have interest in this, because this is where the magic happens, but if you haven't, then just go to this time index. So whilst working at the bank, one of the other account managers, he'd started dating a girl who was training to be a business coach, uh, and she offered to do a free session with me. Uh, and it really opened my eyes um, as to what I was missing. I had no business skills, no sort of life skills. When I first started at the, working at the bank, uh, not long before, I actually thought banks were owned by the government. I didn't even know that banks were businesses. But it led me on a path. It led me on a path to Waterstones uh, and my library, so I couldn't afford all the books, and also Amazon. Uh, and I just started reading these books. So these are the ones that I really would recommend to anyone looking to kind of uh, build wealth uh, and, and perhaps sort of more knowledge as a person, become a more worldly person. They are really good books. Now, the first book I recommend, it looks like a child's book. It's called Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah, I know. So it's a kind of a book about, it takes about an hour to read and it is written, if you're really intellectual and clever, uh, you might think it's a stupid book. If you uh, have an open mind or are not especially bright, then it's kind of a game changer. So you've got these four characters who live in this maze and every day they go into the maze to find cheese. Uh, eventually, one day they arrive, there's no cheese. And it's the books about how these four characters react to this. So one person was very much like I was. That guy wanted compensation. He was outraged. His life had fallen apart. Two of the characters just went off into the maze to find more cheese. And one character kind of took a deep breath um, and eventually found the courage to go off and find more cheese. And his, his mantra was kind of, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? And that's an important message. And that's the message I took from the book. What would I do if I wasn't afraid? Uh, and that kind of really helped me open up my mind for the next book I'm going to talk about. So the next book is by Stephen J. Covey, and it's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's got a long and boring title, I would say, and the book is really long. I mean, if this guy can say things once, he can say it 50 times, just in different ways and longer words. It's a really tough read. So I got loads from this book, and here are the principles from the book. Um, it is excellent. However, I've tried to revisit this book about 10 times since, either in book form, a bridge form, audio, I just cannot get through it again. But it is an amazing book and I highly recommend this one. So the third book I recommend is Rich Dad Poor Dad. So although I suggest reading the books in order, I mean this one, this blew my mind. So the principle of this book is uh, you've got this guy, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, who's got two dads. His real dad, who is a civil servant, and his mate's dad, who is an entrepreneur. So at the start of this book, I think his real dad's more wealthier than his friend's dad. But his, friend kind of, his friend's dad learns about business and learns about assets and liabilities. He gives a great example in the book. And the example is, how many things can you afford to own that make you one dollar? It's an American book. And the answer is, you know, it's infinite, isn't it? And then he talks about how many things can you afford to own that cost you one dollar. And the answer to that isn't infinite. There will be a time when you run out of money. So the whole book is about learning and building assets that then create cash, which fund your liability. So in my case, I uh, have an interest in property, but I had no money. I'm going ahead of myself a bit here, but I found a way to manage property to create an income to then allow me to buy some property, which then created more of an income, which then funds the Tesla. I've jumped the gun, but don't think this is all the message I've got for you. The next two books I would recommend are The 4-Hour Workweek and The E-Myth Revisited. Um, these are really good books about kind of business and systemization. Um, and as if you start a business or if even if even around your house or in your job 
There's lots of things that you probably do that you don't need to do. Someone else can do. Could you write a set of instructions um, for somebody else to follow? For example, I've got an assistant. I've got two assistants. One, they're both Filipino. One lives in the Philippines and one lives in Canada. Um, and as a landlord, I'm a property investor, I own about 25 washing machines. So generally a washing machine will go for about two years before it needs a repair. And then it might go for another two years before it needs replacing. Uh, these are in rentals. So with 25 washing machines, it's probably once a fortnight, someone uh, contacts us to say that they've got a problem with the washing machine. I don't know how to fix washing machines. The only thing I care about is the end result. And the end result is that person's got a working washing machine. So I've written a set of instructions. Uh, I won't bore you with those sets of instructions, but it involves somebody in the Philippines or Canada, depending on when, when the message comes through, basically following a flow chart, which will either get that machine repaired or replaced. And the renter who lives in the house is very happy. And quite often the same day, they've got a new washing machine. So the E-Myth and the 4-Hour Workweek are fantastic books just to help you systemise things. Even if it's not in your job, it could be in your home life. I can really recommend them. So welcome to part three, which covers how I did it. If you want to move on to the next stage, here's the time index for it. Now, when I started off, I didn't have any money, but I did have enthusiasm uh, and kind of a bit of desperation to kind of get going with something. Now, I have an interest in property. So I, I talk about property in this video. I wouldn't recommend property to you unless you particularly like property. It's important to do what interests you, not what you think is going to be the most successful um, uh, way to build assets. So because I didn't have any money, I couldn't buy a property. So I ended up just managing other people's. The, re the way I did that was because I couldn't afford a mortgage, so I'd rented two rooms out in the house I lived in, um, and um, I was able to transfer that skill to managing other people's properties. So after doing that for a while, and I didn't really enjoy that because I like I like the renters. I really like being a landlord, but I don't really like the stress from the landlords. So quite often, landlords are quite stressy because they they need their money, they need their asset to perform. Um, and I'd much prefer to deal with 50 renters than, than five landlords, but th that's just me. But it enabled me to build up enough money to buy um, what I can describe as a, a, a crappy studio. It was uh, a brown, the whole thing was brown, it was bed in the wall type property. It was, yeah, a, a bit of a hole. The person selling it wanted a quick sale, so I was able to buy it quite cheap. Now they were dirt cheap anyway, but I was able to buy it really cheaply. Uh, I spent £5,000 on a refurbishment, but I kept that, kept that for, uh, studio for a couple of years. And within that refurbishment, I turned it into a one bedroom flat. And then ultimately I sold it at the peak of the market um, and made enough money. I made £20,000 with, with, in rent and kind of um, profit on this one. So I had this £20,000 and I really wanted a BMW and thankfully I, had the, <laughs> thankfully I had the maturity at that point not to spend £20,000 on this BMW. So this, this was 2004 and this, sorry this was 2006 and this was a 2004 5 Series. So this car was about £22,000. So if we think forward now, how much would that £22,000 car be worth now? I mean, virtually nothing. Probably no more than two or £3,000. So thankfully, and this is what this video is about, I took the profit I'd made from the first property, I put it into a larger property, into this property. So this property I worked on and made it into it's three bedrooms in there and there's also three studios it rents out really well the renters in there are really good and they've all, they always have been good since 2006 more importantly the income from this property the profit paid for the lease payments on that bmw 
it paid for the lease payments on my next 10 years of BMWs and what this video is about, it makes the lease payment on the Tesla. So although I've owned this Tesla for a year, these six individuals who live in this house are the ones that are making the payments for me. Now, I self-manage my properties. They are highly systemized, but I probably would probably spend one to two hours a month managing this property myself, or, or, or my part of managing this property. So I am trading one or two hours a month to drive the Tesla. However, I do think that's a really good trade. So at this point in the video, I'd just like to say, if you're enjoying this video, thank you. Please hit the like button. I really do appreciate it. It just helps me kind of spread the word and it helps my channel. Um, this channel is about electric vehicles. It's not actually about um, kind of a wealth creation, but it's, it's so important to me that I wanted to put this video in. So if you've got interest in electric vehicles, we've got eight, we've got two cars, two bikes, two scooters, two unicycles, which I love, uh, then consider subscribing as well. So part four, uh, I mentioned earlier that we don't pay for the electricity that um, fuels our EVs. Um, the reason for that is um, we use a supplier called Octopus Energy. So a lot of electric car owners will use Octopus Energy. The reason being is they offer a four hour window overnight on their go tariff where electricity is five pence per kilowatt. So what that means in real terms is that you can drive, if you set your car to charge in that window, you can charge, you, sorry, you can drive about 3,000 miles for 50 pounds. So that is one hell of a, an MPG. So that's 3,000 miles for about 50 pounds. Um, the customer service and pricing is really good with them. So what I did was I made a video review of Octopus Energy. I'll link to that at the end of that, this video. Um, and within that review, I gave my opinions of them. Now, I've got 20 accounts with Octopus Energy. The reason being is a lot of my properties are house share, so I, I pay the bills. Uh, and I like their pricing, I like the customer service. So I, was happily, I would happily recommend them to people. So within this video, I gave a referral code. And what that referral code does for the person watching the video is that means if they sign up to Octopus Energy, they'll get a £50 credit, enough to run their EV for about 3,000 miles. But I also get a £50 credit, enough to run my EV for about 3,000 miles. So although, I mean, this isn't a huge channel, and that video, is, is, the views are in the hundreds, they're not in the thousands, uh, it has meant that both my Tesla and my wife's e-Golf we don't pay for electricity because there's enough of these 50 pound credits coming in to fund our, the running of our cars since we've owned them and also into the future. So what I mean here is the asset is just, I don't know, a 10 minute YouTube video I made that provides credits to my electricity bill, which enables me to drive my car for free. Now, I mentioned free gym kit. These are all a bit out there and perhaps not connected to each other. But the connection is, um, it's about creating assets that fund liabilities. The property that, manage, the property that I own, the six bed house share, is an asset that funds a liability, which is a car. Um, the fuel that goes in my car, the electricity is a liability, it takes money out of my pocket. The YouTube video I made talking about the company that I use is an asset because that puts money into my pocket. Now with the gym kit, this kind of, I kind of stumbled across this. So I use Peloton for my health and fitness. It's really, it's a really good way to work your cardiovascular system. I do not like leg day and I've skipped leg day for the last 30 years. So I won't show you my legs, but it's not pretty. So. With the Peloton bike and all the stuff that comes with it, I find that my legs are stronger and my heart and my lungs are stronger. Well, I don't know about my heart, I can't tell, but my lungs definitely are stronger. What I didn't realise is, like Octopus Energy, they have a referral scheme. So I made a video again showing people how good the Peloton is and how much I enjoy it 
And these are genuine videos. These are genuine reviews. I, I, one thing I would say is never try to mislead anyone. If it's not coming from the heart, uh, that the other person will know. And it's just not right. It's not good for your moral fibres. So in recommending the Peloton or giving an honest review about it, there were some things I'm not happy about. Uh, and I talked about those in the video. If people sign up to buy a Peloton bike, we both get £100 worth of free gym kit. So, so far, you know, in the space of like a week or 10 days, um, I've had £1,200 worth of gym kit. So that's the max for the year, I think, and it will start again next year. But so all the gym kit for the whole family, these, these, are, these are just some stuff that arrived today. All the gym kit for the whole cat family, apart from my son, he's only 10, none of it fits him, is just paid for for this year, and I think it'll be paid for next year as well. So I also told you how I, would, how I get free cinema tickets. Now, that, that's not quite true. I use this income source to pay for my cinema tickets. But from, from 2007 until quite recently, uh, I've stopped using this asset now. Um, my Every trip to the cinema was paid for. So when I became a landlord, I had a bit of time on my hands because I systemized my business re reading the E-Myth and the four hour work week. So I was working about an hour a day at one point. So I wrote a book. Uh, and here's the book. So here's the original one, How Share Hero, and then I kind of revamped it in 2011. I'm not suggesting you buy this book. This book is no longer for sale. I think there's still some about but um, on Amazon. But, I, I mean, this, this isn't to make you buy my book. I don't particularly want you to buy this book. Um, I like it. I'm very proud of it. But unless you've got an interest in house shares, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, but that book um, didn't sell that well. Uh, and what it did give me, and which I didn't enjoy, was notoriety. So when you write a book, people think you're an expert, which um, I kind of was because I've done so much and learned so much. But I ended up speaking on stage, I ended up running training courses, and I kind of got into this sales funnily world, which is what I don't want this video to be. The point of this, though, is since its release, well, from 2007 when it was released, till it came off sale, uh, I think it was 2018, I would get a check, or in the end a bank transfer, for anywhere between 20 and 200 pounds a month. So in the early days it was a lot more, and then it kind of tailed off as time went on. But I'd use this money as like a little treat. So I, I wrote a book in 2007, which was still paying me to go to the cinema in 2019 or 18. It was taking my wife and I out for dinner. I mean, that's just amazing. So once again, an asset to fund a liability. So if you're still here, thanks very much. I know this is a long video, but I, I wanted to give you really good information and I hope I haven't gone too, too deep uh, and it's sort of kept you interested. Um, my advice for anybody starting would be to find something you love and then find someone to pay you to do it. The next step beyond that is to find something that you love and find lots of people to pay you to do it. I would also say when you're pushing, uh, now what I did, I, I, um, I really went for it um, and I kind of became quite stressed at one point. So I had my day job, I had the properties in the evening, um, I was trying to learn as well and it was just too much. So uh, my advice would be when you're pushing, pushing waves, otherwise you'll just start to hate the situation. If you know that this is a month where you're pushing and then, but you're gonna have two weeks of not pushing, um, then that's a much better way to be. Think of it uh, uh, um, as like steps. So you're pushing to get up a step, you've got the flat bit. Another push, oh flat bit, another push. Don't just go hell for leather, you will burn out. There will be a hump as well. There will be a time where even pushing in waves, if you're transitioning from a day job to being self-employed or being an entrepreneur, there will be a day or a week or a month where you're just working really hard. I used to leave the bank in my polyester suit to go and decorate a house. And the brilliant thing about bank suits is anything you get on them comes off, even gloss, just comes straight off. But it was hard, there was a hump. 
uh, and it was difficult. You know, I, I, I'm a laid back kind of guy. I did find it quite difficult at points, but I made sure the humps were short uh, and they, they wouldn't destroy me and they didn't destroy me, thankfully. I'd also say, don't think of one person to one income. So unless you're a brain surgeon or someone who's very, very highly paid, it's quite difficult to grow real wealth with, with one person to one income. For example, a window cleaner can only clean one window at a time and get paid for one job at a time. Um, if that job stops for any reason um, or that customer leaves, he's, he's lost that income. He's one person to one income. In my business, now, what I do as a landlord, I would say that my business is a bit like these days, a bit like VHS, a bit like DVD. It's not the way I would do it now. There are much better ways to do it. So I am one landlord. I've got just over 100 renters. And each one of those pays me a fairly small amount of money each month. But it's a lot of people. It's like a, quite a good subscription business. Uh, once they're in the property, they stay a while, they stay months or years, um, and each month, in general, they, they pay me. Um, the reason why this model is outdated, I love it, and I'm not going to change it, is because it's finite. So I've got no interest in buying any more properties. So I'm at my limit. I can't get any more renters in my properties. Businesses that are real game changers these days... <laughs> Uh, are the ones where you're like a conduit. And by that I mean, if you look at Uber, Uber until recently didn't own any taxis. They were just the conduit. So you had a taxi driver or a guy with a car or a woman, a guy or a woman who wants to go somewhere and they were the bridge in the middle and they take a small amount of money by being that bridge. The growth on that is infinite. If you look at Airbnb, you've got people who want somewhere to stay, people who've got somewhere to stay. Airbnb are the conduit in the middle. So they don't own anything, but they are taking a slice. Uh, Netflix, man, Netflix. We pay Netflix about £10 a month. Everybody I know pays Netflix about £10 a month. Netflix have got 167 million customers. That is 167 million 10 pounds or equivalent a month. What a business. Unlike my business, their business hasn't got a platform. It's not, it's not a bricks and mortar business. It's, it's, it's data, isn't it? So it can just keep growing. If Netflix got 250 million customers, they wouldn't need to build anything, anything else. So they'll be making more TV shows, yeah, and they might need bigger offices. But the leverage is just unbelievable. Um, even some older businesses like eBay, you've got someone who's got some crap for sale, somebody who wants to buy some crap, and eBay just take a little bit in the middle. What great businesses. I think as businesses go, these are the businesses that we're in now and that I think I would encourage anyone and I certainly encourage my children uh, to get into be the conduit well we're at the end I hope you found this video useful as I've mentioned before please like and subscribe I do appreciate it I'll put some more videos around me uh, the ones that we've talked about don't feel obliged to do anything other than watch these videos but until next time I hope it's useful and I'll see you soon